Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to implement MLP for the XOR operation using TensorFlow. In previous video, I already showed you how to implement a single perceptron and covered end operation and OR operation. Well, the single perceptron itself is this decision boundary. If we have one perceptron, that means one decision boundary like this and you can cover end operation and OR operation. But I already show you how the single perceptron cannot work on the XOR operation because the XOR operation needs two decision boundary like this. Two decision boundary means you need two perceptron. So we came up with the idea in the previous video that if we have two perceptrons like this, then we can have the two decision boundary like this, and then we have the Z1 and Z2 axis here. Then if we have one more perceptron, then we can classify these two dots from this white dot. So this is basically our architecture now. I'm going to implement this using the TensorFlow in this video. But instead of the step function, I'm going to use the sigmoid function. The reason why I use the sigmoid function is because during the backpropagation, I need differentiable the activation function while the step function is not differentiable. That's why I use sigmoid in my practice here. So here is the architecture. Instead of the step function, I use the sigmoid function here, here, and here. x1 and x2, it will be like 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1, and the y value is going to be 0, 1, 1, 0. And I have bias here going to this neuron, this neuron, and bias here also going to this neuron. So I have the first hidden layer here having two neurons here. And second hidden layer here have one neuron here. And I have the loss function is going to compare our prediction y hat value with real y value. And the optimizer gradient descent will minimize my loss function and will update wave value and bias value using this back propagation. You can see this green color means I'm going to update all the green color font values here. Wave values and bias value will be updated for your architecture to solve your issue. That's how the deep learning normally work for your sol solution. So here I practice with TensorFlow. I'm going to go to my GitHub. Uh, I'm going to go to my Jupyter notebook here and show you how it's working. Firstly, uh, you import TensorFlow and you need to define TensorFlow graph before you run your graph, right? So firstly, we need to define our input layer. Input layer, we have the x1 and x2, basically two values, right? And I'm going to have four examples, so it will be a four comma two shape for your x value. And the y value, we have four examples, but the value will be zero or one, so it's four comma one. That's our input layer. In the first hidden layer, we need two neurons, right? We need two neurons getting x1 and x2 value. That's why I have 2, 2 here. Uh, two values coming, and um, I have two neurons. That's 2, 2 here. And I'm adding the, the bias value to two neurons in this layer. And the activation function is here. I have the sigmoid function, which is getting the x uh, multiplied by w value plus bias value. This is my first layer. And the second layer, we have just one neuron. So that's why I have two values from the previous layer, but I'm putting one value. That's why I have 2, 1 in this w2 value. And I need a bias here as well, but here I just have one neuron. That's why I have just one in this value. And I also use the sigmoid function as an activation function here. And this is the same, the matrix multiplication of the z value with uh, w value plus bias in this layer. This I call it y hat value, basically our prediction. And in our loss function, we use cross entropy because it's basically classification issue. So that's why I use cross entropy using my y hat value and the real y value here. And I, and I simply using the uh, optimizer using the gradient descent here with a learning rate with 0 0.05 and minimizing the loss function in this gradient descent. So we defined the whole architecture here. You can see we had two neurons in the first hidden layer, one neuron in the second layer. 
And the loss function, we just define the loss function using cross uh, entropy. And we have the optimizer using the gradient descent. And once, once we are running the training, this optimizer will update all the green fonts here using the back propagation. Wave value, bias value, wave value, bias value will be updated in your epoch. And uh, we will have the optimized uh, deep learning model for your XOR operation. So let's train. So here is our real train X and train Y. You can see the 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, and 1. And accordingly, you have the 0, 1, 1, 0, which is XOR operation. And here I train. So I init all the, the, the global variables. And uh, using says the run the init, I initiate. Now you are actually running your graph, graph for your XOR operation. And I have the 20K epoch here. Let's see how it's updating our wave value and bias value and see the result here. So firstly, you can see this is not good, but as time goes by, let me see this one. So we have this one and the final output is this one. So this is zero and zero. This is very close to zero and the one and one is very close to zero. But once we have the zero and one or one and zero is very close to one. So if you can say it's more than 50% is 1, less than 50% is 0, then it is totally working fine for the XOR operation. So congratulations, you just implemented XOR operation using the TensorFlow. So if you want to practice yourself, you always can go to my GitHub website here, download and practice yourself. So that's it. Then I will see you on the next video. Thank you very much.